Hello, boys and girls. Mrs. Long here for Friday, July the 9th. This is our recording for the letter J is for Jazzy. But what I'm going to talk about right now is tide pools. So we're going to learn some information today about tide pools. Miss Macy, our counselor, is going to share a trip that she took to Wallops Island and share some shells that she found there and talk a little bit about environmental concerns regarding oceans and waterways. And then uh, we're going to learn about some animals that live in tide pools and what an interesting place the tide pools are. And I have this cute book. It's called Ocean Soup and their tide pool poems. And it's all about animals that live in tide pools. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this today. All right, this picture shows some of the different animals that live in a tide pool. It says, tide pools contain mysterious worlds where all the beauty of the sea is subtly suggested and portrayed in miniature. Tide pool animals have developed ways to survive the daily changes in their habitat. Barnacles and mussels shut tight when exposed to air and hot sun, keeping them moist inside their shells. Starfish, crabs, and small fish seek shelter under damp rocks or wet seaweed. Alrighty, here is an illustration of a barnacle. And this says, barnacles are related to crabs, shrimp, and lobsters. What does a barnacle look like inside its little white home? Imagine a tiny shrimp-like creature with its head stuck to the floor, kicking food into its mouth with its legs. Barnacles fasten themselves to any surface, rocks, pilings, boats, even whales and sea turtles. And then we have a poem, it's called The Barnacle Rat. Lying on his back in his, this small teepee, waiting for the tide, waiting for the sea. Waves tumble in, I'm in the mood to open my top and snatch some food. Don't want no crab, don't want no prawn. All I want to eat is fresh plankton. I got rhythm dancing in the brine. Life as a barnacle is so sublime. <laughs> okay, here's an illustration of a sea slug. This says, sea slugs are, use tentacles on their heads to smell and touch. They eat plants or small animals by scraping them off rocks and seaweed with their tongues. The jelly-like bodies of marine sea slugs vary in color more than those of garden slugs. And then we have a little poem called Harry Doris. Hello, my name is Doris. I'm a shellless gastropod, but you can call me sea slug if gastropod sounds odd. Don't you think I'm gorgeous? With my raspy tongue, I scrape for bits of healthy food to eat. A slug must watch her shape. I'm really rather lucky that I have no pesky shell. Behold my lovely body, I'm a stunning tide pool bell. Hello, my name is Doris, I'm a shellless gastropod, but you can call me sea slug if gastropod sounds odd. Here's an illustration of a sea urchin. This says, sea urchins are also called pincushions of the sea. They keep to the dark places of the tide pool and camouflage themselves with bits of seaweed and shells. Gulls, crabs, starfish, and sea otters like to eat sea urchins. And then here's the little poem. I love my spines. I love my spines, I really do. If you were spiny, wouldn't you? They're long and sharp and very green. My mother says to keep them clean. My friends have claws and arms and feet, but spines are different. Spines are neat. Somewhere past the waterline, there's a mammal called the porcupine. Its spines are really cool, but I bet. I bet, but I think spines are better wet. <laughs> All right, so this is a picture of a starfish, and there's a crab there also. So this is using the word regenerate. I don't know if you've ever heard that word before. In the tide pool where I dwell, five arms grasp a mussel shell. A crab comes, snip, there goes my arm. Rude, yes, but I'm not alarmed. There won't be there won't be need to operate since starfish arms regenerate. It means that they can grow back their leg or one of their arms if they get if they get injured or um, snipped off by a crab. And then here's some information about a starfish. 
Starfish, also called sea stars, are related to sea urchins. While urchins are vegetarians, starfish are aggressive carnivores. A starfish first wraps its arm around a mussel or clam. Then it wrenches open the shell, slips its stomach inside the shell, and begins eating. Starfish have an amazing ability to regenerate. A whole new starfish can grow from just one arm and a small part of the body. Isn't that crazy? Okay, this illustration shows a bunch of different hermit crabs and see all the different kinds of shells. So this says, hermit crabs are born without shells on their abdomens. They locate discarded shells from creatures such as whelks or moon snails and use them for protection. As hermit crabs' bodies grow, the crabs seek out larger and larger shells. And Macy's going to share with you, if you haven't watched it already, some shells that she found when she was on a class trip to the Wilds Island. So that'll be kind of interesting. And then here's a little poem about hermit crabs. It's called Dome Home. I'm a hermit crab who needs a home. I've got to find the perfect dome. I'm looking for a carapace, a nice new shell with lots of space. Scuttle to the left, scuttle to the right. In my new shell, I'll scuttle all night. A bigger shell would suit me more. I'll search across this tide pool floor. Let's go crab walk into town. I'll keep my eye stalks looking down. Scuttle to the left, scuttle to the right. In my new shell, I'll scuttle all night. Here's a shell a crab would love. Hey, it fits me like a glove. I wave my claws in celebration. Look at me, a chic crustacean. Scuttle to the left, scuttle to the right. In my new shell, I'll scuttle all night. All right, well, so I just wanted to share with you those poems for, about tide pools. I thought it was kind of a cute book. So to learn more about tide pools, there are some videos that we have um, to show you some animals that live in tide pools and things like that. And this ties in with the craft that we're making with the seashell wind chime. Okay. I'll just read a little bit more here on the tide pool. Um, it says, tide pools are wonderful places full of plant and animal life that are located along shorelines where the ocean meets the land. They are influenced heavily by the sea level and tides. And if you walk along the seashore during the day, you may notice that the level of the ocean water changes, so you have high tide and low tide. Tide pools are simply water-filled holes or crevices that are surrounded by rocks that trap water. Tide pools can be small, shallow puddles, or they can be large, deep holes. Tide pool and life forms within are constantly affected not only by the tides, but also by the sun, the wind, and rocks. The sun can heat shallow waters and expose organisms, leading to an environment quite different from that of the cold ocean. These harsh conditions make tide pools and, and their organisms very interesting. Let's see. So some of the animals that live in tide pools, most of them are invertebrates. This means that they don't have a backbone. And so tide pool animals are pushed by the crashing waves, and the fact that they don't have backbones lets them be soft and floppy, making it easier for them to avoid injury in the rough waters. So you can have uh, sand dollars, which are round and flat, large like coins, and they have five points on the surface. Octopuses can also live in a tide pool. And they're very sneaky. They hide in rocky crevices during the day and come out to hunt at night. You can have animals like a snail or crab. Algae and seaweed also live in tide pools and sea urchins. Some of those we talked about in the book and you saw some illustrations and heard some of those poems. I hope that you enjoyed learning about tide pools and the creatures that live in them. And I hope that you had fun making the seashell wind chime.